Welcome on back to the channel, everybody. It has been a minute some, since we have gotten out on the grill and done some cooking so long, in fact, that I have a new grill. It's covered in bugs for some weird reason. So today's video, we are going to be doing my first attempt ever at doing a reverse sear. Well, really a reverse sear on anything, but uh, a reverse sear on a back strap, whole back straps and tenderloins, the most deliciousness. So a few weeks ago, I uh, shot my first deer of the season. It was a nice, healthy doe. Uh, we got the tenderloins out, we got the back straps, we got the rest turned into breakfast sausage. What I wanted to do was put this on a, a smoker grill and get it to temperature first with some smoke and then hit it with that sear and that is called the reverse sear method. It's really popular in uh, steaks and hopefully it's gonna have a nice, caramely, delicious crust. This is gonna be something you guys can try at home and hopefully it's delicious and uh, it's a new spin on your deer meat. So let's give it a whirl. Y'all, this is the Camp Chef Wood Wind. Uh, it is a digital smoker. Go ahead and turn it on. You'll set temp, this Bluetooth to your phone and all that fun stuff. Uh, the pellet grills have become really popular, especially with a lot of hunters, wild game enthusiasts. Let's do 220 high smoke. Let's do that. Okay, here we go. So it is warming up right now. It takes about five minutes. Um, I'm using the Competition Blend pellets that are also Camp Chef. How this system works is it feeds through here. It is indirect right now with this plate. Uh, there's a probe right here that we're going to use. It comes with this probe, by the way. Just go through the slot. Uh, you could also make this direct heat by removing there's a shield plate right here. You can move that. You can get some actual flames coming up. But we're going to do indirect heat. We're going to do uh, 225. We're going to smoke it until it is about 130 on the inside. Uh, so there's basically health, uh, ready to go eating temp wise. And then we're going to hit it super hard with a sear. I've got this uh, this little iron skillet right here. This flat iron skillet. And we're just going to heat that up real hot, give it a nice sizzle. First thing we got to do is put some rubs on our meat. Let's go take a look at it while this is warming up. In the kitchen with OSG. Um, ocean Spoon Girl. We're going to the ocean tomorrow. You with, already told with me. Ocean that? Spoon Girl. I was going to make it a surprise. Were you? Yeah, I was going to be like, where are we headed next? Well, by the time yes, this video hits, them. we'll probably already be there. I oh, figured yeah. on our last day here, we get a, a, a deer feast going yeah. on. Yeah. So you want to show them our meat that we got going on here? And then I'm going to show them the rubs that we're going to be using today while you're doing that. So this is the Cosmos Q, uh, Cosmos Q friend of Guggen Squad and uh, master of everything meats. He's legitimate world champion and he makes some amazing stuff. Uh, these rubs right here have like a sugary coating, a sweet and spicy coating, and they really make a, a really good like glaze when it uh, melts into your meat and then when you cook it, it's just awesome. Uh, we tried it the other day on some deer, did it a little different than what we're gonna do here. So these are the back straps. These have aged Let's see, I wet aged them in a cooler for well, four days. When did you pull them out? Four days after I was gone. I was traveling, OSG pulled them out of the cooler though and vacuum sealed them. Then we left them in the refrigerator for two weeks? No. Week and a half? No week. week. and a half. Been trying to experiment over the last few years to try to get the most tenderness out of uh, my deer meat. And I think this is going to be mega juicy succulents. Look at those tenderloins, my goodness. What we're gonna do, hit it first with uh, one of these. What do you wanna go with, honey? Honey chipotle killer bee or just regular honey killer bee? Uh, one spicier than the other? Yeah. And there's one heat. Two heats, one heat. What are you feeling? You feeling spicy? I'm not feeling that spicy. No, you're feeling <laughs> vanilla. Another one we use all the time here at the treehouse. This is the, just the SPG. Um, I would also suggest the cow cover from Cosmos Q. That's what he usually uses on everything as a base. Okay. So. And then you just want me to sprinkle Do this. a real, like, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Get in there. Get in there good with it. Get a little more wrist action. 
on that and then flip them over. Oh yeah. I have also already cut out the silver skin on these. Thank you. So these should be just ready to dissolve in your mouth. Mm. Just like to give it a little pat. Not a big rub in, but just kind of a pat. And the, uh, the natural juices from the meat will start to stick to those sugars that are in the rubs and really get something special going on. And then uh, we're gonna put it on the ketchup. This is deer meat done right, right here. Just look at these awesome cuts. You know, <laughs> I got a lot of respect for the animal. Every time I shoot a deer, I start thinking like, what am I gonna do with this one? Every time I go, every animal I take, I learn a little bit and I'm starting to get it dialed. So, the grill's pretty clean. No need to even scrape it off. So, let's go ahead. These look absolutely amazing. These tenderloins. Absolutely incredible. Oh man. And that Cosmo rub just melts into there. Woohoo, baby. First thing we need to probe is probably the loins. Eh, yeah, we'll go we'll just go by feel here. I'm gonna go middle of this back strap. Probe is in. That's at 51 degrees, so when it hits. 130, they're gonna be good, but uh, when they're about 120, I'll probably go ahead and, and pull the tenderloins off and get a, go ahead and get a hot sear on them. I got it set to go off at 120, and uh, there's the grill at 242 right now. So now let me show you all the, uh, the meat from the last buck that I shot. Big old buck, man. One of the biggest Texas bucks I've ever shot. These back straps are ginormous right here. So I still have to take a lot of the fat in the silver skin off of these. Um, this is definitely the fattiest deer I've ever shot in Texas. The, uh, the rump of that deer was just full of tallow. So I'm gonna take these out and clean, and clean those up. I actually use a fillet knife to take the silver skin off, off the back straps. Uh, I find it's a little bit easier, you know, just like you would a fish, like a skin. You know, of course, we got the tenderloins in there as well, so we're, we're reloading, restocking as we're cooking more up at the top there at the treehouse. But this is the process that I've been using on the deer. I have hung a couple in the refrigerator, and I, I do have the ability to do that at the new lease, but a cooler will work just fine. If you don't have a walk-in fridge, go ahead and quarter your deer and let it sit in the cooler. We get a couple of big 20-pound packs of ice, and I will let this drain, let this ice drain out with the, with the red juices that are in there. And then just periodically do that and you're basically wet aging your meat. You do that for you know four to seven days and I think you're gonna see a difference with it. And if any of y'all out there have the Dometic coolers or refrigerators rather, uh, you'll have to get back with me on this. I haven't tried this yet. I'm going to But if you've got one you can basically dry age a deer on site Let's say you're going for a week. You shoot a deer on the first day um, You can quarter it put it in the refrigerator. I need to come up with some sort of uh, rack system in there that I can put it up and and let it age and I'm thinking about trying to put uh, like a salt block or some sort of you know, put some Himalayan salt or something in there. Get fancy with it and see if that makes a difference as well. And that way it's not sitting directly on water, ice, you know, there's not water being soaked into the meat. It's a dry age. I enjoy experimenting uh, with this to try to get the most flavorful, tenderest deer meat out there. Some of you might listen to the Meat Eater podcast, but I listened to an episode one day, Steve Ranella, and he, uh, he had a meat scientist on. He was talking about when you have an animal that hasn't gone through rigor mortis yet and you put that muscle group on the skillet or whatever it is basically that meat that muscle will constrict 
up way more than it would after it's gone through rigor so it makes it really tough you know i had some tenderloins the other day out of a young doe and it was within an hour of us processing it and uh being on the ground and it was so tough i was like why is this so tough this makes no sense whatsoever so when i listened to that it made total sense uh aging your meat is really important so at least let your animal go through rigor mortis before you hang it up and start quartering in and processing it <laughs> pretty close y'all it's been 35 minutes or so and we are going to pull these off put some butter and olive oil on there and just just probably you know 30 seconds or so on the tenderloins maybe a minute on the straps yeah it's gonna be good Amy and then put it in tin foil for about 20 minutes and yeah. I haven't even peeked at it yet that's a big no-no don't want to peek at it but I know for sure it's gonna get that nice little glazy crust on there with that rub. Ooh. It is time, we're at 1.31. So let's get a reveal right now. Whee! Honestly, looks a hair dry. So we're gonna pull. <laughs> We're gonna pull these out right now. <laughs> Maybe I should have peed a little earlier. Maybe loves bubbles. And she's on the back deck, we got bubbles. So I'm gonna shut down the grill right now, confirm. So we got our melted butter. Woo! Yeah. Sizzle. Hot. <laughs> Watch your style. I'm pretty sure that's the first time you've ever done that. <laughs> okay. We're gonna come in here. We're gonna get these tendies that look a little dry, but we're gonna bring them back to life. They do look a little dry. They're very pink. Ooh. What we're gonna do. Ooh, yep. I'm liking the style. Hopefully this works. Just a little bit. Okay. Oh, you're using my good Williams Sonoma pan to do that? Yeah. Ah! What's it supposed to do be for? Just let the steam, <laughs> let the butter cook in. Uh, 30 seconds to a minute right here. Then we're gonna do the same thing with straps. Real hot, real hot, real fast. Um, just eyeing my Williams Sonoma good copper mixing bowl. Tell you what, that's real hot. It's copper. Is it copper? I thought it was stainless. It's copper. I'm not gonna lie to you, that's really hot. I'm kind of nervous, but I'm gonna pull this thing off. My boy, mixing ball! We'll make the bowl going right there for a second. Okay? These are, these are coming off. Ball the action. Okay. <laughs> Timmy's on the aluminum foil. Same thing with the backies. Ooh, I'm smelling it. Look, it smells delicious. Yep, the backies. Meanwhile, my asparagus inside is probably burning. <laughs> Hang on, crucial moment. A little bit of buttery goodness. Reverse searing. Yeah. Just get a little crust. Buttery goodness on this side. Literally just seconds. Ooh, I got one on my toe. That hurts. Yep. Oh, no, 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 it's hot. It's really hot. That's why you're wearing socks. Yeah, this is the finishing move right here. Dad socks are on. Dad socks are key. Okay. Shut that down. We're good. We're good. That was extremely hot. Just want to get that crust. We got the crust. Now we're going on here. Now we need to wrap up. I want I want that double heat. So I can also put a layer on top of this, which I'm gonna need. Transferring inside. Okay. 
20 minutes inside of that, and we will have deliciousness. <laughs> I hope. Experimental. Go check on my asparagus loop in the oven. Let me. She's done. Okay, take her out for me. Uh, what about these? Uh, take them in there. Okay, asparagus done. Gonna have some sides. A little bit of uh, whatever your favorite adult beverage is. A little red wine with the meat. I think it's gonna be amazing. Happy smiles will reindeer me and all the. Would you like to do the honors on um, covering? Ooh. See what I'm saying? Hydration back in the game. Wow, I'm thoroughly impressed. <laughs> Woo, baby, this looks awesome. But just to finish it off, just a little topper, we're gonna take a little Himalayan salt right here and just do a little sprinkling. And right now, y'all, moment of truth. Let's do the tenderloin. Let's chop a piece. Let's see what we're dealing with here. That's what it looks like on the inside. Definitely done. Not as tender as I was hoping. That crust, the flavor is outstanding. Let's try the back strap. That is tender right there. Tender, very juicy, maybe a tad overcooked with that that 130, but we'll try it. Mmm. Now the back strap. That might be the best whitetail I've ever had. That is outstanding. Oh my gosh. So I think the tendies, we just cooked a hair too long. Back strap's perfect. Oh my gosh, y'all. Look at this. Y'all need to get up in this right here. Oh my dear goodness. Mmm. See that crust? And that one is cooked perfectly. Best white top backstrap I've ever had. No question. No question. Reverse seal on oh, reverse seal on that backstrap. Simply outstanding. Mmm. Let's get OSG's opinion. Get you a piece of that backstrap right there. Okay. You've had quite a few backstraps in your day. How about those flavors? Almost smells like a maple bacon flavor. <laughs> really good, right? <laughs> Zero gaminess. That's good. That's awesome. That's I think that's the best white tail backstrap I've ever had. All right, I feel like if you did not tell me this was deer or venison. You just wouldn't know. I don't think I would know. Okay, try a piece of the tenderloin. I thought it was a little tough. Okay. Let me try either one. I think I just overcooked it. I really taste some maple bacon flavor though. <sighs> There's no maple or I bacon know. involved, I so know. that's awesome. You said you didn't like this one as much? I thought it was delicious flavor. It's just a little tougher than what I would expect out of a tenderloin. I like this one more. Really? Yeah, I'll okay. take this one for dinner. You well, maybe you got into the juicy piece. I got the end, so. <laughs> We're pretty good. Okay. I think you did really good. I think this is the best one we've ever cooked. Again, that's aged, I think, four, you said four or five days? Four days, yeah. Four days in and the then, cooler. And, and the then uh, vacuum sealed. sealed in the refrigerator for a week and a half. Cosmos rubs on there, a little bit of SPG. Mm -hmm. uh, smoked it at one or 225 for about an hour. Got it up to 130. Pulled it off, reverse sear, and then added a little Himalayan salt. Oh, let it sit. Oh, okay. Let it sit for 20 minutes and then added a little Himalayan salt. Honestly, when you pulled it out when it was just smoked, I was like, ah, oh. yeah. I was a little hesitant because it did not look that I know, good. it looked like jerky. It looked <laughs> like jerky at first. And I, I still think I, I should have pulled it off like 120. That was my original plan. I was like, mm. ah, maybe I need to do 140. I should have done 120 gum with my gut, but. I was trying to be safe, um, but you never want to overcook white tail deer. It makes it taste really irony, but honestly, zero gaminess. I think we aged it perfectly to get all the game out and get the tenderness. Awesome white tail deer. Delicious. Try that recipe at home, y'all, on your next white tail. I think you will love it. And while we were filming that, 
Emmy has thrown what is that? Sour cream? Sour cream. Sour cream everywhere. Oh, God bless that little girl. I love her. All right, y'all. That is it for today. Hopefully, this recipe helps you out uh, on your next wild game experience. If you get some back straps. Don't forget those tenderloins, man. They're tucked up in there, but you gotta get those out. Those are really, really good. And don't forget to age them. I'm gonna be doing this a little bit more, so stay tuned, subscribe if you wanna see more on the cooking and hunting side of things. And thank you guys for tuning in. As always, I will see you on the next adventure and good luck on your next outdoor experience. Wishing you the best, signing off. See you soon.